Hey everyone, welcome back to Painted. It has been a crazy busy week here at Painted and we are happy to have you joining us. I'm sure it's a busy Friday for everybody with a cold, cold Chicago spring, now summer. Uh, it's actually now close to 70 out here, which is kind of stunning because that's a little uh, warmer than it's been for the rest of the week. But hey, Carol, nice to see you here. Um, so we're going to come back. Sorry, I can see my apron shoulder pads have been slipping. We're going to have some fun here. Hey, Steven, nice to see you. So we're going to be working with more fun with our new epoxy acrylic color, uh, sorry, epo epoxy resin pigment colors, color art, resin art, a pigment. It's for epoxy. Now, you might have seen that I had been working on this. I don't remember if I posted this. I have done color samples of all of our colors here. I know this is reversed, but we have plum red, seagrass, uh, purple sapphire, and what a color is that? Golden autumn. Sorry, even I can't read backwards. This is queen stiletto, green apple, amaryllis. This is clementine, sea foam, and pretty in pink. This is uh, spiced ginger, aquamarine, and wild coral. Down here we have uh, Indian spice, mermaid, peach fuzz. Here we have diamond, go uh, golden diamond, Belize blue, and what is that? Antique rose. Uh, sorry, antique rose gold. Um, we have another golden diamond here. The reason for the difference is, as you can see it right under here, I wrote bling it, and then this doesn't have it. Bling it is something I'll explain in just a second, but we do have some bling it colors. Hey Sandy, nice to see you. Uh, this is, uh, what the heck, Belize Blues. And, oh no, that's sorry, looking at the wrong ones. Last colors are uh, Golden Diamond, State, uh, um, Star of a Loon, uh, Platinum Rose, and this is Diamond Gold, Mountain Mist, and True Silver. So there are a couple colors here like the Indian Spice and the Rose Gold and one of the golden diamonds that are called blingets. Blingets are a new addition to the resin art epoxy pigment setup. They are, uh, let's see, interior and exterior stable. And um, I believe if I've got this right, yeah, interior, exterior stable, and you can add them to both resin and water-based products, which is pretty cool. This is the first crossover um, product from pigment for water-based products and pigment for resin. So I'm pretty excited about this. Now we added to our inventory already. We added five new colors this week and they are, the, the newest colors here, we have purple sapphire, Wild Coral, oh, let's see which other ones we added. Golden Diamond, actually we had Golden Diamond, I think. I'm trying to remember the new colors. Oh, Red Plum, that's a new one. And the Star of Elune, that is a new color. So we've got some pretty cool colors. I'm gonna put that those colors up uh, for everybody to see in a picture post. I have them, I just haven't put them in yet and then we will have votes on the newest colors that we don't have in our list and I have those listed somewhere we will do that later I will put the picture in I will ask everybody to vote and the we will create a contest out of voting for it so everybody who votes for a color the winning color and the winning name, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick several colors, the three top colors we're gonna order, bring in here to the studio. 
And I'm going to draw a name of the top three chosen colors out of the list of people who voted for them, and they will get an eight ounce epoxy kit and that pigment color of choice. Uh, so whatever they vote for, they're gonna get a sample of. Now, like I said, you need to share the video. Everybody needs to do a vote. The vote will get you um, your name entered in the contest, and one name for each of the top three colors will be drawn so that everybody can get an eight ounce pigment kit and a jar of the pigment. Now that, that is a $50 prize, just so you understand. We're not giving away little things, that's $50 prize. So I'm very excited about that. We're gonna be playing with all the new colors today and we're going to be playing with all the ones that we're choosing and we're gonna do a couple different kinds of pours. Um, in the past, you've seen me try to do a basic ring pour, do some pulling, do some drawing out. We are going to try a Dutch pour today, and we're going to try a couple string pulls today. So we're doing some different stuff. Um, a lot of these techniques, if you're used to a pouring with acrylic, we're going to be doing them with epoxy, and we will get cells and stuff. They're much smaller than you get when you do a normal uh, acrylic pour but they're super durable and things kind of do different. They, they will settle differently, flow differently. You're not going to have the same kind of really structured result that you get when you pour um, with acrylic paints because they set up so fast and they don't level out the same way. So we've got some stuff mixed up. I'm gonna turn the camera down so you can see what I'm working on and we're gonna get going. Um, I think. We're gonna start with a Dutch pour, um, and I will explain what each kind of pour is as we do it. But meanwhile, I'm gonna scroll this down here so that you can see where I'm working. I gotta play with the gooseneck a little bit and hope I don't fling a camera somewhere. I don't want it to go. So now you're looking at, eh, let's see if I can get this so you can see it the best. Jeez, you silly tripods that I have to work with don't always make it easy. There we go. We're a little higher up. That'll make it easier. And let's see. I think that. All right. And I'm going to stir up the epoxy. I am going to turn on my iPad, which is over here, so I can see the comments as we go. Just give me a second to turn things on turn volumes down so I don't have to listen to myself, that's for sure. God knows I listen to myself enough as it is. All right, let me get to my page. And let's see, where am I? Okay, here I am live. I can see myself now. I can see all of you. And, okay, this is gonna give me the, why doesn't wanna show the comments? All right, there we go, so I can see you. All right, Carol, if you've never played with epoxy, this is the fun stuff to do. All right, so you can see I've got my board set up. I'm gonna push this out of the way because I need a mixing surface. And the first thing I'm gonna do is put on some gloves because trust me, you don't want this all over yourself. It's, it's pretty gross when it's bare like this. Um, and it's sticky and I always come out of doing this coated with some epoxy. Hi Bat, how are you? Hi Rima, nice to see you. Um, and yes, um, Ashley, we will be doing pours in the furniture class. Um, for those of you who haven't visited my studio page, I have a furniture class coming up in July, I believe it's the 7th and 8th of July. I can't remember anything right now, but it is fabulous furniture finishes and we will be doing epoxy finishes as well as old world finishing paint as well as other kinds of furniture finishes. Um, I've already pre-measured what I'm doing here is pouring into a larger container. I have already pre-measured uh, my resin and my hardener. Um, I am using Art Resin Epoxy, I will grab the bottle in just a second and show it to you. 
Art Resin Epoxy is great for art products, it projects. It does not harden. I mean, uh, sorry, does not yellow. It doesn't harden. That would be a bad thing. This is the product, Art Resin Epoxy. We sell it in gallons, quarts, and eight ounce kits. So the first thing I have to do is mix part A and part B together, equal amounts. And I'm not kidding when I say equal, because if you put in too much resin and not enough hardener, it stays sticky. If you put in too much hardener and not enough resin, it dries too fast and it gets brittle. So even amounts. Alrighty. Yay. Okay. And I always um, pour into, for a bigger one, I pour into two smaller containers and then I pour it into a larger container to be mixed. Um, I'm asked this all the time. Pot life on this is surprisingly long, probably because it's an art product, but I usually am able to continue to pour on this with this stuff um, easily for 45 minutes. Uh, depending on the weather and the conditions, I can pour for an hour because the other one, the, the live that I did a couple days ago with this, I still had so much product left, I poured a couple more canvases trying to use it up. No problem pouring it whatsoever. And granted, I've already mixed up my black epoxy and my white. Um, that is just some white pigment and some black pigment for epoxies that I bought on Amazon so I have a white or a black background to work with. Meanwhile, I'm stirring the tar out of this because if you don't mix it well, you're gonna have soft spots. So as long as you think you need to mix it, mix it, and then mix it a little longer. Once the bubbles start to fly, you're usually in a pretty good place, but again, don't inhale the bubbles because the bubbles are epoxy and it will harden in your, you don't want to have it harden in your respiratory system. All right, now this is not a countertop epoxy. It is not the same quality of temperature resistance that countertop and flooring epoxy are. This is great on small pieces of furniture. This is great for art projects. Just don't try to put it on your floor or on a, on a counter. Uh, what is the difference between epoxy and poly? Well, uh, it depend, Gina, that depends on if you're talking about water-based epoxy or solvent-based epoxy. First of all, water-based epoxy, uh, a water-based uh, polyurethane um, doesn't have, it's, first, it's not solvent-based. Sorry, I'm stuttering right now because I'm trying to think of the answers while I stir product. I, I can only do so many things at once. Okay, so water-based poly is not a, the idea is not to pour it, it's to brush it on and get a thin coat of it on and seal the surface. Uh, so, acrylic, I'm sorry, um, solvent-borne epoxies, uh, geez, I'm stuttering today. Solvent-borne polyurethanes are the same way, except they're naturally yellow. If you open a can of polyurethane that's oil-based, it's yellow, and it's going to continue to yellow over time. Again, neither of these pigments would work in, none of these pigments except the bling it would actually work in um, water-based epoxy. I'm sorry, water-based polyurethane. Um, as far as I know, none of these pigments would actually work in oil-based uh, polyurethane. This is designed to be a pourable coating. It's designed to self-level completely. You're getting much thicker millage once this finally dries. Um, and it's super, super glossy. And when you're using countertop and flooring epoxy, the leveling is very important. You get a nice level surface. And it is actually, it scuffs easier, but um, in 90% in of the case, I'd say polyurethane, uh, uh, epoxies are harder wearing than polyurethanes. But it, again, it all depends on what the job is. So. We're doing some fun creative stuff. I'm trying to give you ideas that you can do both for art and for countertop or, or tabletops or other vertical sur uh, horizontal surfaces that can level. The other thing is you can't put on epoxy, put epoxy on a surface and then have it go 
vertical like this because it'll all just sag. So you want to only use it on flat surfaces. Or if you're going to put it on a horizontal surface, sorry, got a horizontal vertical. If you want to put it on a vertical surface, you need to do it in parts, set it down, let it cure, let it dry, and then build it this way. You cannot just pour it on this way. I'm sorry guys, I have not been able to get polyurethane or vertical and horizontal straight once today. I am, I must just be in a bad place with my words today. Um, it would seem that would be the case. Okay. Kim, nice to see you. Gina, great. I'm, I'm sorry if I didn't get, if I didn't make any sense with what I was just saying, somebody please tell me because um, I know I was babbling and I couldn't, I was getting my words caught up because I was thinking about the project I was about, um, we're about to start. All right, so I have white two-part epoxy. Again, the coloring is just something I got off of eBay or not eBay, uh, off of Amazon. I put a little bit in. You, this is one you have to pre-tint um, the hardener, just like the black one. You have to tint the hardener before you mix the resin uh, into it. I'm not sure why. It probably does not like to blend that easily um, with the other stuff going on. All right, so we're gonna, let's see, we're gonna do a little Dutch pour here. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Dutch pour, as I was not until somebody asked me about it, it's actually where you pour color on in little bits over a white base and then blow the, co air, the color around with either a hair dryer or a compressor or something like that. So I think, once again, I gotta move this out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. I am pouring some colors Actually, I'm just pouring clear into about five containers, and we're going to do some rainbow pours today, you know, in honor of Pride Month for all my friends. All right, so I've got a bunch of color, uh, clear poured out, so I need to grab a yellow. So let's go over to my epoxy charts over here. Sorry about that. I'm throwing colors. So we're going to go with, let's see, Diamond Bling It, which is wherever I put it, Golden Diamond Bling It. We're going to go with, let's see, what color? It's a new one, Aquamarine. Aquamarine. We're going to do a rainbow, so I'm trying to remember all the colors. Of course, my brain doesn't want to remember them. So we're gonna go with a green apple. Let's see, you got yellow, green, blue. Let's see. I think we're gonna do the purple sapphire. And do the wild coral because it's got lots of glitter. Okay, and there we go. We got rainbow colors to choose from. So we are going to be using, again, the golden diamond bling it, green apple, ultramarine, because it is a new color, I wanted to bring it into this. We're gonna be using the purple sapphire and the wild coral and we're going to mix those colors in. Now again, the measurements suggested by the manufacturer, one, two, three, four, I didn't pour my fifth color out. The directions suggested by the manufacturer are an eighth of a teaspoon to a quarter of a teaspoon per ounce. Now I'm gonna give it a about a quarter of a teaspoon because I have probably an ounce and a half in each of these. All right, there's that one. And we'll just mix them all up. Ooh, I like this. And I think I got a little more in here that I wanted, so I'm pouring some back into the cup. Because we're gonna play with some other colors later too. Oh, we have so many colors to play with. Okay, so this is green apple. 
Okay, so the only color that's really not new in this mix is the green apple color. Hey, Audra, nice to see you. Okay. And we're gonna do some, a same scoop size into the aquamarine. I know some people have said the Belize blue and the mermaid color, but quite frankly, I've used those a lot. So I'm trying to pull in some new colors. Blow out the other color from there. That is the purple sapphire. Um, and the reason I'm turning these jars upside down is some of my jars have um, labels on the lids and some of them don't. So I want to be able to see what it is. And this is the cool thing, what I need you all to see, is some of these colors have so much sparkle and mica in them. And this wild coral is one of them. Oh my God, the color is just brilliant. All right, so I've got one, two, three, four, and mixing stick number five. So let's mix these colors up. And again, these are the standard amounts you can saturate your mix much less and get translucent colors, which are just gorgeous, either to pour together or pour as a single color. Um, I've done it many times to kind of tone something I was painting on a surface and give it a hint of another color. Look at that purple. Oh my God, that purple's gorgeous. Oh, oh look how beautiful that is. And here's the apple green. Alrighty. Now I have not made these color sample boards for sale. However, if somebody wants to have me make them uh, a tester, not this big, but a tester with all the colors on it, I can do that. And you just need to reach out to me at paintedstudio.com for me to be able to um, make one for you and tell you what the cost is going to be. All right, so we've got the can back here. We're going to push another board here and we're going to test this. I have never done a Dutch pour. So the concept behind Dutch pour is that you pour a very white background or a very black background, put few little spots of color in and then manipulate it, not with um, any other tool other than a heat gun or a hair dryer or in my case, a blower, because I don't have my, I know, I've seen this done with acrylics paints and I know the epoxy is heavier, so I need something stronger than a hair dryer. All right, we're gonna smear this all over the board. This is the white pigmented two-part epoxy. And again, as always, if I miss your questions, because, you know, my hands get covered in goo, so it's not always like the smartest thing for me to stick my hand on my iPad, even though I have a screen protector on it because I do dumb things like stick my hands on it while it's I got wet gooey stuff on it. Um, it gets harder and harder for me to do it as we go along. <laughs> I'm trying, I try really hard not to make too big a mess, you know, on my equipment even if I do trash the studio in doing so. All right, so I could leave this like this right now and it would be fine. But later on when I flame, you know, when I torch this, I don't really want the white to come back up through what I'm doing. Oh, I may scrape some of this down. I got so much on here. Um, so I flame, I torch it. Um, there we go, just take a little bit of that down. I had so much on there. I would feel a little better if I do that. All right, so I wanna pop all the bubbles right now because if I do it after I've poured the other colors on here and moved it around, the white will pop up through the colors and that's what I'm trying to avoid a little bit. So all I'm doing
so I've done that and yes you can you don't have to use a big blowtorch you can use you know the little creme brulee torches that you see in all kinds of places all right so we're gonna have a little fun here with these colors so we're gonna put a little bit of purple in first and then we're gonna do a little blue And a little green. And a little yellow. I probably, I should have started up uh, with the, uh, the reddish color. Do my Roy G. Biv color theory stuff, but we're okay here. All right, so. This is gonna be noisy, I'm warning everybody, and I don't know if this is gonna work. This is my first time experimenting with this idea. So I have one of these little air compressors for um, the inexpensive Wagner home decor paint sprayer. And if I turn it on, it still blows. So it's gonna blow cool air. Fair warning, if you're not, not happy with loud noises, you need to turn the volume down right now because this will be loud. I almost forgot the important part. <laughs> You're supposed to put a little extra ring of the white around the colors. So it blows in white and it blows out. So here we go again. <laughs> white in here and now I'm gonna blow it out
Okay, now I did this very simply. And now if I play with it with the torch, it's also going to bloom a little more. I could make this more complex. I could put a couple of drops of different colors in different places. So I could put, you know, I could put a few drops here and a few drops there. And let's get some more of this beautiful teal color in. with a little more gold and a little more green. Let's get a little gold in here. And where do I want some more pink? I think I want a little pink right up in here. And again, I'm gonna take the compressor I still have enough fluids in here, I should be able to blow this out some more. Okay, so you can see this is a super delicate kind of style. All of this flame. And I could do more. I mean, I could stick my fingers in here and draw the colors, but this was the basic idea behind a Dutch pour. And I'm already seeing cells starting to form. It's very cool. But the colors are fairly separated. Yeah, you know, I could take it, tilt it, but there's not a whole lot left on here now. But if you look up here, how close up closely, you can see patterns starting to form. And now I'm gonna set this off to the side. Okay. Now what I also discovered the other day, as we were doing stuff, that it is very, very easy for black to swallow the pigments. And what do I mean by that? Um, if you saw my pour the other day, I was doing it on a blackboard. It basically ate all of my pigment in there. So um, I wouldn't recommend a Dutch pour with black so much. Um, all right, we're going to try a string pour with black. And again, I'm just using uh, canvas boards because they stay nice and rigid. So first thing I'm gonna do is cover my board with black, but I'm gonna keep it thinner than you often see me have seen me pour in the past. Why? Because I don't want it to eat out, or uh, eat up, eat up, sorry. We're not going out to dinner on this. Uh, I don't want it to eat all my colors. And there will be a lot here, so. We're gonna try something, I, again, I'm trying techniques with epoxy that I've seen done with acrylic pores. So the results are going to be different. Uh, but that's kind of cool, I like stuff like that. going to torch this again like I did the white one for the same reasons because I don't want when I torch this with the colors in it I don't want the black popping up through the colors any more than I can prevent it I really want the black to be 
more of an accessory. Oh, and if you get this on yourself, which I do all the time, the easiest way to clean it off, denature alcohol in a paper towel. Don't try other stuff, don't waste your time. Rubbing alcohol will work, just not as well. Last night, um, I found some on my elbow that I hadn't cleaned off from yesterday, I thought I had. I used good old fashioned sea breeze uh, toner to get it off. Yes, we have that in my house. All right, get that all off there. All right, so I poured the black, and I think I've tinted it a little light, a uh, little lighter this time too, just because I got it so black the other day. So I've got that on. So, and I, I don't have any real string, but I had jute wrapping paper, and this will work. Or wrapping twine, that'll work. So we're gonna put on a line of pink. And then purple. Let's see which way am I gonna go. I'm gonna go this way. Again, I'm not following my Roy G. Biz. I'm just going in the way that makes me happy. Um, for those of you who don't know what I'm referring to when I say Roy G. Biv, back in school and art theory, um, we you learn the colors correct order in light spectrum as Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, G as in green, B, blue, indigo, and violet. So I didn't go in those orders. Now, the next thing I'm going to be doing is taking a piece at a time, some twine. Now, I'm hoping this works because my twine is not wanting to grab into the resin. But I'll get it in there, darn it. And who knows, maybe not having it grab might do some more interesting stuff. I don't know, we'll find out. Tapping it down so that uh, I get as much placed in here as I can possibly get. So again, this is going to be torched, and because it's epoxy, it does level itself up. Michael, it was nice to see you. Yes, I'm sorry I'm not at Society of Gilders this year. That just didn't work out for me, unfortunately. All right, so you can see I have all of this lined up. I have my strings on here. I'm gonna turn this sideways so you can see the whole thing. Now, what I did, I'm doing is I'm taking the end of a paintbrush, I could use a skewer, I could use anything, and taking this and pulling this down. Off to the end and then pulling all the strings out. Ooh, that came out kind of cool. And I just throw those to the side. I have my table covered in plastic and it's so covered in plastic that quite frankly, um, it could easily just peel off most of this on its own, which I do all the time. Um, all right, I wanna take a little bit of black fill that black in up here because I don't want that much black showing or that much canvas showing underneath. I need to 
get some of this on here and it'll level out later. Look how cool that came out though. I'm gonna take a little black and put it right down that center vein. Even though when I torch it, it will kind of dissolve and they'll all pool together. I do like that little bit of the black vein right there. And a big difference on how everything comes out is just how level your surfaces are. Um, I put one sample out that I was doing on a live. And it looks so pretty on, it, on its own, but I put it on a slight slant and you can see how it shifted, which in itself was very cool. All right, so we're gonna torch this. I love how this came out. Don't worry about the flames bursting there. It's just actually this thing, but it hits that surface and it burns a little dirty. Now I was just using the torch to manipulate. So now it's really quite warm. Oops, knocked over my blowtorch. So now it's really quite warm. I want to find a level uh, surface to set this on. So I'm going for one of my unopened cans of product. And I'm going to set it uh, in the middle of the other side of the table where it is the most level. So I'm walking around, I'm not ignoring anybody. I just have to get to a place where I can set this and it will dry more levelly. But if you look up here close, you can already see those cells starting to form. And this is so pretty. I hope this dries close to as fabulous as it looks right now. Alrighty, let's hope I've done this well. Okay, that came out really, really pretty. Oh, okay, I'm gonna sit down for a second and look at everybody's comments, see if I need anything. Okay. Uh, Gina, thank you, Rima, thank you. Carol, how long does it take to dry? Um, yes, I'll do another, Gina, I promise. <laughs> um, look, see, I have another canvas right here. This is an actual canvas. Um, and because it's got the wood support on the back, it's easy for me to set up on here. So um, how, <laughs> the question was, um, how long does it take to dry? All right, the pot setup time is about 45 minutes to an hour. Obviously, if I'm in a smaller container, it will start setting up sooner. Um, however, if, I'm in a larger container, I can easily pour for an hour or so. Um, let's see, what are we gonna do here next? Let's see. Um, I may do a, a little bit of a, a Dutch pour here with, um, on this canvas. Let's see how I wanna do that. I have to think about it for a second. Um, and Gina, of course, I'm gonna do more. I keep doing these. Um, so what I was saying is pot time setup is about between 45 minutes and an hour. Look, this will stay tacky for a really freaking long time overnight. I don't say that it will be ready to use for at least, at least eight hours. Um, it may feel more dry to the touch at that point. I'm not convinced. Um, quite frankly, I think that it will still be tacky 
for eight hours or longer. But I've always done this and I've walked away overnight, come back in and it's been perfectly good. It's the same as any other epoxy, how about that? Can you make it, manipulate it to make flowers or some sort of landscape pictures? Yeah, I can actually. Um, let's, let's play with that a little bit here. All right, we're gonna do this. Uh, let's make this a white canvas today for this. Um, flowers take more, you, I'm not really painting with this so much as I'm manipulating it, but yes, it can sort of be painted with. You just have to understand that this is a, a material that levels on its own. So all the flow that happens is out of your control. Um, and I embrace that. Sometimes it's just fun to give up the control that I always feel like I have to have such tight control over everything I do with my painting because, you know, we all get locked into that idea that we're gonna do perfection. Um, but guess what? Perfection and hand-created aren't necessarily compatible. Uh, compatible. They are compatible. Um, they, Hand-painted, hand-created has inherent flaws, and then you have to allow for what the material itself does. So I'm not going to create, you know, some sort of perfect landscape image. I'm going to end up creating something that's a little on the dreamy, watercolory, you know, blurry side with this. Um, if you're watching me, what I'm doing now is I'm trying to get a little epoxy down the sides of the canvas so that um, even the sides are finished off and I just don't have these big heavy drips of something showing on a side that's not finished. And here again. You know, I can take four or five shades of um, blue or green and create water and grass and all kinds of stuff. Um, it's just gonna be very soft effect. Right now we're only working with five colors for the honor of, in honor of June's Pride Month, we're keeping a rainbow palette. So let's see what I can create here. So I gotta get all these sides. I'm gonna get the stuff that's dripping on one end and bring it down to the other. As you can see, you know, I have plenty of working time with this. I'm not at all concerned that this is gonna set up before I'm ready to use it. Um, yeah, always use gloves with this. This is a, you know, this is a messy job. This is not like, easy peasy, it's gonna just be simple, no problem. Alrighty, so let's, um, which way do I, I'm gonna do a little bit of this. We'll keep all the weight on one end. Let's, uh, so I'm gonna put a little purple in here. We're gonna make it a little bit of oceany. And I can do a lot of things here. Um, I think what I might do is just swipe this a little bit. This is a standard technique for um, acrylic pores. and it just sort of smooshes the colors around. I could go really crazy with that and over blend it and then we'd lose all the details and the colors, but then I'm gonna come back up here, add a little more of this color, the aquamarine, and then let's do a little bit of this.
Okay, so I've got the green in there. Maybe we'll add just a touch of the gold here. Come on, I know there's more. You're in there. And I'm going to take another key. Now, I personally think this would have been better with a couple shades of blue and the green, and not necessarily the purple in here, but it's what I had. I'm liking this. Now, I have four colors on here, and then I think what I'm gonna do is pretty cheesy looking sunbursts, I admit, but once I do a little blowing on it. Let's try this. We're gonna mess with this a little bit. Watch your ears, everybody. I'm turning the compressor on. I've got this sort of vague kindergarten -y kind of sunburst in there, which is not working for me completely. So I'm gonna do this. Add a little pink in here to make it sort of like um, a sunrise. And then I think I'm going to just dribble a little white in so that it can thin a little bit when I blow it. I am totally making this up as we're going, folks, so if you don't like it, I'm sorry. So my next step is to take it and do this. Ah, there we go. That's that's getting to be more something I can live with. All right, so we're going to let this start to go. I'm going to torch it, see what blooms happen in here, because I'm already seeing some interesting color choices. is covered. Okay. okay, so I got some interesting stuff happening here. I can push it a little bit. 
I can, because I just heated it up a little bit, so it's now it's a little more liquid. If you look at it, you can see it shifting. If I want to, I can change this whole thing down and create a nice red, a drip, which actually I'm kind of enjoying because I didn't really love my sunburst there. So I really, I prefer that actually to what I had for the, the sunburst. Sorry, Carol, it was not my finest landscape and I couldn't live with it. So, okay, now I'm gonna set this over to the side to dry. cups out from underneath it. I swear to it, finding a place to let them all dry takes longer than actually doing the pour. All right, so this one, I'm not gonna put any other color on here um, because I want you to see the opacity of these. And again, I'm just doing a little bit of, let me pour this stuff everywhere. Get some, make sure I get stuff at the edges and in the corners. And also, it lets me use up all the last of my colored epoxy. Well, without really intending to, I almost ended up with an X pattern. See, X, that wasn't my goal. Let's see. I love the green, oh, okay. Okay. So I'm glad everybody's enjoying this. Again, if I miss any comments, um, I always go back and, God, that purple is gorgeous. Go back and look through uh, the comments and answer questions. I always do that. Um, all of these products, the Art Resin Epoxy, the Metallic Art Resin or Resin Art Pigments, those are all available on at paintedstudio.com um, when I post the new colors later. I will show that to you on the screen in a few minutes, but I gotta finish what I'm doing here or it's going to be a disaster. All right, let's get some. I'm gonna use up all of these colors on this little board and then they're gonna drip everywhere probably down the side of the can that this is on. I may I may end up permanently sealing this can this can closed. I've done that before. Screwdriver and hammer got him free though. Okay, so I will be posting the new um, colors to vote for. Uh, right now I know that one is the golden diamond bling it. The other is the antique rose bling it. Uh, third one is uh, the Indian Spice Blingit, because I didn't permanently bring in any of the Blingits. I wanted to try them first. And then um, there are a bunch of other colors whose names, of course, I cannot remember at this very moment. Why? Because I have no memory anymore. So we've got this very, very blue and pink pour happening here. I always keep a little bit back in reserve just because um, you never know where you're gonna need a little bit of color. This, the green was greener, it looked more like Mardi Gras. Gold is about done, so whatever I need to add later on, it's not going to be gold because I pretty much finished that up. And then here's the green. And when I'm done with this, I simply um, little blob of stuff in there plastic cap, I think, from a paintbrush. Um, all I do 
is let the containers dry out, harden up, and then I just toss them. Now, I've already got this pretty well covered, and you can see how opaque this is, and I'm just shifting things. All, all of these surfaces go in here. Now I could leave it like this because it's pretty darn cool. I can also, let's see, what have I got here? I can just simply start drawing in this like this. Why? Because that drew all the colors together and then I can go back. And then I can just sort of none of these lines are going to stay hard. So you can see the product is already sort of starting to melt into itself. And then let's see, I'm going to go this way. here and I can pull a little there and I can pull a little there and I already like how this is starting to set up I mean this is very pretty as it is very simple you know well simple technique I shouldn't say the colors are simple because they're they're pretty rainbowy bright which is again of course the point of today I got a little hole in my canvas right there all right we're on a torch now and the torching releases the bubbles in the surface, liquefies it a little bit, but it also, the heat creates the, the creation of cells. It creates some pigments to rise, some to fall. And see, this area right here is already kind of dissolving into not a whole lot of stuff. So I can come back in through here and I can create a few more rivers so I don't lose definition, which was kind of interesting to me. And all, as you can see, the, the epoxy comes back into itself. Okay, well, this is all going to be a huge drippy mess that I have to clean up tomorrow, which is why I do these at the end of the day, so that um, I have no problems cleaning it up in the morning and nobody else comes in and sees this mess. But I really love how some of these have come out. I'm really impressed with um, my rainbow string pour, and actually the one where I tried to landscape and then it shifted. It's all been a lot of fun. Let me take my gloves off here so I can take my camera and hopefully not drop it. Forgive me, my hands. All right. So I am done for the day. I'm going to give you all a little, turn this around, give you all a little screen down. This is the final result here. That's going to bloom a little, but look how pretty pretty those little tiny cells are and the extra crystalline pigment is that's extra mica in there and I'm going to step over all my stuff and walk past yes these are my jars of other jars of pigments it's a giant it's a purple caterpillar with the oh that's so funny Carol so look how that's those cells broke up so nicely but we're not seeing quite as much up here so I may hit it with the torch again just to see if I can get some more cells and look at how cool the rainbow pour is turning around, although I'm gonna to have to turn it just to make sure all that pink doesn't go flying off the end because obviously that's where it's seeping to, but look how good that looks. And then here is our Dutch pour, which is slowly blooming. I think I need to work on that Dutch pour a little more, but oh wow, all of this one I kind of really super love. 
I'm gonna push it down this way so I get some pink back in here. Or I may throw a little more pink on the top and just let it fall in. And all right, everybody, thanks for coming with me on this sunny Friday that's finally okay out. Um, a little gloomy in here in Chicago, but I know it's getting nice for other people. All right, everybody, have a great weekend. See you later. Bye.